previously on Tractor Time with Tim. Randall, thanks for giving us a tour here of the cover crops and uh, we got to see the plow filling in some of the ditches off of the bean stubble. We need to go do some other stuff. I think you're right. Bag of box. So this guy will do about 36 to 40 acres. Uh, Probably not. not. Quite. 30, between 30 and 32. Yeah, 30 and 32 something. acres. Well, I thought we had a way pin bad, but turns out we just didn't have a depth panel set in a hole. So a I'm trying pin. to put versus a no way pin. A way pin that's what we talked about measuring yeah. the down pressure. I didn't think you had that on this on this. Planter. Oh yeah, we just can't control it. We All we can do is it monitor on. it on this planter. Oh. So you've had the you've had the way pin concept for several years. We got the 2020 and 14 for both planters. Okay. So based on your measurements over the years, does it vary a lot? Uh, you can sure tell where the hard ground is. And then can you do could you do anything to control it at all? Another more manual like on this planter the frame doesn't weigh enough to get it in the ground on hard spots. Okay. But so it's not like a, you just put the three point you can down. Adjustable front. down pressure springs here. You can set. You could get off the tractor and do something if the yes. field in general yes. was different. But yes. you couldn't. You couldn't just like lower the three point a little bit more or something like that and expect right. it. It's a set with the springs here. Yeah, makes sense. So what's the deal with the purple seeds, Tom? I believe this must be the prettiest corn I've seen. Oh, uh, <laughs> we just we have real pretty corn. We don't want to plant ugly corn. <laughs> okay. Refuge in the bag. Refuge in the bag. Okay, so they so they actually treat or, or color the refuge seeds different. Yeah. That's so they are identifiable. So we should talk a little about refuge seeds. In general, this corn is resistant to corn borer via the having the BT trait built into it, right? Right. When they talk about the refuge, what they're saying is a refuge for the corn borer. So those purple seeds don't have the BT trait. Now it's never really made a lot of sense uh, to have them separate uh, because we used to have to plant Say two or three rows of yeah. refuge corn and and the rest uh, BT corn. Ninety five percent and five percent. I think after they went to the in the bag, then they could change the raise the ratio. Right. When we planted them separate, we had to be eighty twenty. Wasn't it or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Well, whether we like it or not, this video is brought to you by Dupont. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's no, now. it's Corteva. Corteva. Now, uh -oh, what happened? Dow DuPont got bought? Dow DuPont started their own agri ag company. And, and did they sell Pioneer then? No, Pioneer still is owned by Corteva. Pioneer Kevin name is Dow. still owned by Dow DuPont. So it's still all owned by Dow but DuPont. instead of DuPont, it's called Corteva, or will be. Well, that's goofy. <laughs> Didn't ask for my opinion. <laughs> Gotta change it. I can't believe they made a change like that without asking me. <laughs> that's big stuff. In for north 40. Yeah. Oh, you're taking one planter one place and one planter another? Yeah. I thought you'd take them both the same place. It doesn't work very well to do that. It's hard to keep the numbers separated. Well, I'm sort of disappointed. I thought we were all going to go to the same field. Would have been a lot easier to have uh, videoed both tractors at the same time, but looks like it's easier for them to go to separate field because they can plant separate hybrids that way and and just not interfere with each other. So the tractors will actually be a few miles apart when they get started planting here. Key points is they're working with all those monitors 
fully uh, occupied, fully trying to see what's going on. The one thing they weren't doing was steering. And that's new this year on this tractor. Now we're going to do something traditional. And something that hasn't changed since Dad was a kid. You can hear him telling a story about his dad. He drove a few feet and he had to get out and see how deep it was going. Something you just can't automate, can you? Pioneer just sent out a uh, newsletter this week that talked about that and said that if you plant it any shallower, even if it comes up, it doesn't do as well. The uh, roots can't reach the ground some way or another. Yeah, and they said that uh, it really hurts yield to plant it any shallower, even though it would come up. Mm -hmm. well, I guess recommend I... it's two to two and a half inches, I think. Well, it said one and a half to two, okay. but it said the, the traditional uh, second knuckle okay. or until your thumb meets your... You know, that's 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 tradition. <laughs> now notice we cannot hardly tell. See, this truly is no till. That front fluted coulter does uh, just enough disturbance to the soil to allow the V trench to be cut. See about how deep it is with that dirt seed firmer in there. The grain's right under the seed firmer. on the ends so that it can flex downward for these low spots. Dad's 85 years old. Just had a heart attack just a few weeks ago. Absolutely incredible that he's able to be out here. Now with corn, they're willing to plant the headlands first because driving over them when they're planting the rest of the field really doesn't have any negative impact. With soybeans, they always plant the end rows or the headlands last because the soybeans themselves are a lot more sensitive to having a little compaction over the top of the seed. They just don't do as well. What do you think, Randall? You got, so you got used to all those new monitors yet? It's gonna take a little practice, but I think he'll get them. He's used to running them. It's just refreshing between the different years. Any, any changes this year for him? Added auto steer. Okay. So it should make it a little bit easier. He's used to Hopefully. auto steer from the combine. Yeah, and it's running the same monitor as the combine with the John Deere auto steer. Okay. I think I'll wait for him to get back to this end and make sure he gets her. Yep. Not that he can't do it. I... Oh, he can handle it, but. Uh... <laughs> Just gonna make sure everything's all right for him. He'll have this planted in for too long. <laughs> it won't take long, will it? No. This is uh, 40 acres here to the north of us towards the tractor. And so he won't have quite enough seed to plant it. But he'll be able to get it planted this evening. Meanwhile, you're going to go plant somewhere else. Yep. This property is owned by my dad. The field you're going to plant in is owned by Christy and I. Yeah. So it's kind of the way the, the, the farm works here is that the, the farm itself doesn't own any property. The individuals involved own some property, and I think we may plant your field this evening, right? You have if one. If we can get to it, yeah. We may not get yours done. Randall's just getting started in the uh, land ownership business. You've got what, it's 12, 12 acres, 13 12 acres. Half, yeah. yeah, that's farmable. But you gotta start somewhere. That's right. Where's your strap, Randall? Your safety strap. He's got a strap, two of them, one of them over each shoulder. Okay, there you go. We'll just hang on to this. <laughs> <laughs> now I can't believe anybody would ride on something that high. It don't look high from when you're looking over here. Yeah, that, that just looked that way then. Yeah. I need them all in but two. What time did you want to start planting the seed? Hey, you're not. You're, you're about you're, right. You're a little early yet. It's not quite five yet, but it'll be after that. Six, six, six o'clock a lot of times. And I gotta get up here. I think I'm going over on the other side where the handle is. You're gonna be the bag corraller? I don't know. Is that, is that a hard job? Not really. Looks like I better stand downwind. Tom, I'm not sure. I think this thing needs some sort of a fold-out ladder or something. Oh, I don't know. Can you do 
Well, uh, to our viewers, you're really not supposed to fill it when it's folded up. But it's a lot easier than just unfolding it and letting it down and everything. So. And we could have done that. And we could have easily done that. And we probably should have done. Every time they pour one of those bags in, it's... $250. $250. Better get every kernel. Yeah. So you're going to put in 26 bags or something like that? Is that what you said? Well, I think we have 30. There's 30 total. So 30 bags is $7,500. I'm failing here on my bag corralling job. Okay, so all this corn on the ground, that's that leftover stuff we put in the other day for the last right. video, right? Right. Exactly it is. That's three-year-old seed. You're supposed to use the boxes. So if you use the boxes, you can hold it up all the way over the top and drain it in? Yeah. Seed tender. Seed tender, see? Okay. Don't talk about that with corn. <laughs> I don't want my corn in boxes. The other side. Okay, I'm going to put some stuff in here. So what are you putting in there now, Randall? It's a mixture of talc and graphite to seed flow lubricant. Okay. It helps the seed flow through the delivery hoses to the meters easier and better for the plates. Okay, yeah, so it's, it a, it's a, powdery, a powdery lubricant. It's talcum powder. Okay. To make, you, to make you, uh, to Only make your skin feel good, Tom? Yes. To Just make your make seed you slick. Smooth like a baby's bottom. Uh-oh. <laughs> and then you get to put pencil lead in. And it's black and it gets all over and you can't work it off. Yeah, that's the worst part about the graphite part. We should have checked to see if it was in though, Tom. Huh? It may just not have enough down pressure on it. It ain't got aired up yet. Okay. No, don't adjust them yet. Okay, well this is here but then they're playing hold the rest of Oh, I don't know how to get the thing to pump up. Whenever it's down and reading no margin, I guess that's why I was going to try to go real slow right okay, here. Just, just, just put it down and let it sit here again. Yeah. But it won't, I don't think it'll work like that. So this is the first time they've actually tried to plant with this new automatic air downforce system that we talked about in the last video. What we're seeing is that it's not applying enough down pressure. So the individual row units are actually not going down far at all. In fact, we can see the corn on top of the ground complexity. I mean, there's a lot of complexity in this rig. So, Randall's in there working with the monitors. And we can kind of see from the outside, you can see this wheel here is just kind of bouncing, the little gauge wheel here. I guess you have to about feel the wheels to see if they're actually up again. Because that one doesn't look very neat down there. there. Is it up now? It don't quit on the See, Tom? This one's down. That one's not. It seems like he needs to get this uh, middle down pressure number up bigger. Okay. Then I don't know what I'm talking about. Our old barn over here, well, I think maybe it's seen better days. Its current caretaker, meaning me, has not really done a very good job of taking care. When we first got this property in 1998, the barn uh, had both ends in it. We actually walked around in the hayloft of the barn this summer we bought it, but we have really no use for it, so we're just letting it rot down. Eventually we'll get here and we'll tear it down. What was the verdict there, Tom? We're gonna do what we were gonna do, only try to go along the edge of fields and across the hard dirt here. Okay, just uh, not actually plant anything, just we go a little farther maybe we could maybe it would get set itself but are you going to actually plant corn or just yeah, we're uh, actually planting corn or trying. okay i thought maybe you might just turn the corn off and I think you need to see if the same row maybe is consistent for, you know, a few feet. It just doesn't seem like it's getting enough down pressure on it, does it? Right. We were thinking, I think you're right. I think we're all thinking that if we can, maybe if it runs, it will come out. So we 
through it and see. Yeah. Or is it possible the planter isn't low enough? Well, it goes down to what it goes down to. Okay, so there's no there's no no adjustment really. No on cylinder that. stop like we used to do. That's not deep enough yet. He's gonna go faster. That's probably a good idea too. And then if we just stop him out there, we can see if the wheels are spinning. And then if we any of those wheels are loose, then it's not enough pressure. Randall eventually called someone for help, yeah, at 6 o'clock on Saturday night, and they talked him through how to adjust the monitors inside the cab to be able to apply more down pressure. So there was no mechanical problems at all. Uh, they eventually got the down pressure adjusted via software. Tom, I, there's something I don't understand over here. Oh yeah, there was corn up under the. Uh, up on the frame. Yeah. Here's what I'm not understanding. See that last row out there? Yeah. That coulter is it's working totally different than all the rest. Well, I thought it was the next to the last row. Yeah, it does. I agree. But this is this one's really unless we don't have that. See, it's it's plowing. It's sending it out to the. You can see it. Yeah, it's plowing out to the side, isn't it? Yeah. It's uh, not running straight. Yeah, that needs to be worked on, I believe. Yeah. It's just hardly enough to close the crack. It's still pretty okay. wet. This uh, this far outside left-hand row unit is got a cutter adjusted wrong somehow. I believe row number 15 is doing the same thing. So what Tom's looking for now, we talked about in that earlier video of how these rows will automatically turn off the corn when they get to a place that's already been planted. So in this case, we've planted the end rows along this way. And we're wanting to make sure that it's actually turning off the row at the perfect timing or turning on the row at the perfect timing as the case may be there okay. so far so good three rows here that's very consistent okay randall we got our uh pressure situation fixed so now you got down pressure down force yeah first time i've seen all these monitors well, that's one of the reasons I like auto steer, so you got time to watch them all. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Now, I've got a little bit of uh, reflection here. Glare. makes it hard to see. How about glare. that? It's maybe a little bit better. So so tell me a little bit. This one's got a lot of good stuff going on up here. What, what are we seeing there? Well, it's telling you how many seeds per acre in the population. And the singulation is planting one seed at a time to not waste with doubles and windshield and skips and and then it's showing how much down pressure we've got on the downforce. We've got the good spacing which goes along with how close the seat is to where it's actually supposed to be. Okay. And then we've got the little row flow button, low, little row flow and air force there that's controlling the, doing Sing the controlling. Singulation of 99.7%. Now, for those of you who don't understand what singulation means, it means that every time that the planter intends to plant a seed, it plants one and only one seed. Right. Now, with uh, the other planter that, that Dad's driving, we'll see about 96%, right, singulation? Yeah, you hope for more than that, but it, usually that's about where it ends up, 97, 97 and a half, 98, you hope. And how about the 1790? Was it... Uh... Well, it had precision meters on it, so it did... Like this, 99.9 9 there right now. Yeah, it says 99.9. That's really good. You had one that says good ride. Yeah. How does it know about what good ride is? Well, the row unit modules that we, I think we showed on the other video. Yeah. They have a sensor in them that knows how much that row unit's bouncing as it's going across the field. So that's okay. where the good ride factor comes, and then that's how it, it uses that to figure the good spacing. Okay, so if the ride is rough and the row is bouncing, right. Then even though it's singulating and dropping a kernel at every appropriate time, the bounce there is going to cause that spacing to be off. Right. 
sounds like a hospital emergency room in here, Randall. Oh, I wish I could shut the John Deere monitor off. There's not even a volume control or anything on the thing? Oh, I don't know. I haven't looked at it enough to know, I guess. So this field belongs to Christy and I. And it's 69 acres of farmable land and 11 acres here in this little woods that we're farming around right here and right now for a total of 80 acres. I'm driving wide here on my marker because I don't have a changed over from beans. So my marker is set for 15 inch rows. Oh. Well now that's poor preparation. That's man. right. <laughs> that is for sure. Well you spent all this time on the auto steer you never thought oh I guess I still need to use those markers. Yeah. Spent too much time trying to get all the beepers to work. Well I think they're working. <laughs> they're doing a good job of beeping. <laughs> but folks Probably. as we talked about in the last video it's this attention to detail it's where your profit is. The difference between 96% and 99% might be the margin of, of profit on, on the farm. And it might not be. Yeah. But we only get it once to plant it, or we hope once to plant it. We want to do the best job we can planting it when right. it's time to. And we talk about that at harvest. We want to do the best job we can harvesting. I mean, we do the best we can. We have to let God take care of the rest. That's right. I wish I knew what was beeping. I think it's probably your heart rate or something. I don't know what it is. Somebody would could tell me how to turn that beeper off. I just haven't called to find out about it, I guess. Maybe one of our viewers will know that. I bet they will. Somebody will. Remember that the, you've planted now a total of how many acres with this? Uh, six and a half. Yeah, and I think it was... And it took us three hours to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess just almost two. Okay. If that clock's right. Meanwhile, Dad's planted about 30 or 32 with his uh, old 12 row planter. Yeah, that's usually the way it works. That planter is simple enough, you just drop it in the ground and pull it. And then now, I expect a good ride to go down and across that ditch. It went down to 94, 95, oh, 89. If you get a row that we have the rum on, a row unit module on, and it's running right in the fertilizer truck tracks or something where it was leaving a track and that row unit sitting there bouncing real slow, sometimes you can. It'll, you can watch it and it'll really drop down. Well, ride quality on the middle row here is 10% rough ride. Okay, you've got ride quality per row. Well, per there's seven sensors on here, so we got okay. seven of our 16. But see, we got fertilizer track right here underneath us. Yeah. Fertilizer truck run right here, so it's why it's down. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And I, or I can show it on here. Good ride. Where's it at? There it is. Oh, so that's the, the now the screen is showing the good ride. Right. And there's those okay. seven rows showing there. This is a little barn lot we got here. There's a grain bin. Eventually we're going to tear that old barn down. Actually, we may not if we wait long enough. <laughs> it may, may not find, have to tear it down. It may find its own way down. Yeah. Plenty of room over there. Yeah, Mr. Row. Yeah, no kidding. Costing you money. Yeah, you are. That will be out in the road ditch. I'm not a, not back in practice yet. Yeah, it takes a little while. Get a feel of my width. I'm afraid you may hit this post on the other side. Well, there's room for it, but if it wasn't How about that marker? marker? I'm not going to raise it all the way up because there's a power line there. I don't really want to hit the power line with it. I've done that before. That might be a suck. I've hit a power line with a marker before. Tear it down? No, but I took the power out of some houses. Did you really? Yeah. I saw a big old ball of fire underneath the wing wheels that was on that side. I never bothered anything in the tractor, I guess. Well, I'll be. But you uh, took out power from the houses? Yeah. Now, did you know that at the time? No, I didn't. See, now that's a little bit better story than my story. My best story on that kind of thing is I took out the Bone Gap Postmaster's mailbox. Okay. If you're going to take out somebody's mailbox, maybe the postmaster is not the right guy to yeah, choose. Probably not. But this happened to be the guy I was working for his wife's house. Uh -oh. Or his house. The guy uh -oh. I was working for his house. Uh-oh. So that wouldn't be so good either. Yeah, his wife called him and said the power was out and didn't really know why because it was a nice sunny day. It was time to be planting. He called and asked you and you went, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, it never I, occurred to me that the ball of fire was just tearing up a transformer or something. <laughs> 
I mean, ball of fire. <laughs> You're a wimp. big old spark. You I don't know what you want to call it. Whatever, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know. <laughs> kind of normal, I suppose. <laughs> well, don't hit my barn, Randall. Well, I'm just more worried about running over the tin and stuff that's laying out in the grass. And there is one there. I'm going to have to move that. I'm all worried about it, and I'm sitting on one. So. <laughs> Just as long as there ain't nails sticking up in it, that's only probably not enough to worry about. You got buzzards living in your barn. They gotta live somewhere. <laughs> make you an ink pen. That looks like it'd make a nice quill pen, doesn't it? Yeah. So just as tradition has it, we've started planting on Saturday evening <laughs> at 5.30 or 6 o'clock. Just so that you guys online understand, we don't work on Sunday, so... This just means we're getting started right as the work week comes to an end. It seems like it's always that way. But we were able to work out some wrinkles here this evening that we won't have to worry about on Monday now, so we can get going good on Monday. Yeah, but Dad will at least get his 40 planted. Yeah, if you let him stay at it, he'd have that South 40 planted too. I don't know. I imagine he's getting tired. So now you're up to 7 miles an hour. We're doing a little test here, I think, uh, to see if, with, with all the monitors we've got, could you drive faster? And still maintain your high qualities of uh, you notice, spacing. Notice the red spots. You probably can't. We can look at the we can look at this screen later. But the red spots, the skips are yep. really increased. We're up to one and a half percent skips. Yeah, I don't believe we need to be running seven miles an hour, do we? Well, not with the, at the current settings. We could probably turn our vacuum up a little bit and hold the seats to the plate a little tighter, and might get by with it, but. Okay. Interesting. You know, it's just, it's really nice to have monitors to be able to tell you uh, whether you're, right. you know, how good of a job you're doing because. Right. Before you'd say, oh, I just, I drove a little faster and it didn't seem like it hurt anything. Right. But you didn't have any way of knowing because your standard population monitor won't tell you what kind of job you're doing. It'll just count seats. So it'll tell you how many seats per acre, but it won't tell you whether they're spaced appropriately. Correct. And that's that's the old, all there were for monitors was just to tell you the population, and that was a big step over the initial monitors that were <laughs> something tied to the shaft to watch it spin. Yeah. And exactly. lights that blinked to, to tell when it's planting. But I think Granddad was pretty early getting the monitor that actually told him the population yep. so he knew what kind of job he was doing and how many It was really enlightening. Seats. It was really enlightening, especially on soybeans. Um, I mean, not that it had a yield impact on soybeans, but, but he really cut down on his population, planting population on soybeans when he could count by the seed instead of by the pound. Right. Now, this was back in the day, of course, but uh, they used to just plant by the pound. Oh, we plant so many pounds an acre or whatever. Then the variation in seed size uh, became clear and we began to save a lot of seed because he was planning by the actual seed count. Everything look all right so far? I've been looking forward instead of backward. I can't see anything. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, tour inside the planter. It's kind of hard to show you everything. Of course, we don't have you know some good way to do a, a screen capture on some of these monitors. Maybe you've got, you've got a feel for it. And uh, Randall, I really appreciate the tour. Yeah. Especially no since it's your first uh, few acres here. How many do we have now? We're up to 11 and a half. 11 and a half acres. That's all you planted with this planter. Yeah. And uh, we've been along for most of them, folks. Even along for some of the testing in the earlier videos. So. Yeah. But uh, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor Time, Time with, with Tim. Tim.